What do people want? And it doesn't matter if you are in HVAC. It doesn't matter if you run a hotel. It doesn't matter if you run a fast food restaurant. It doesn't matter if you cut hair. What people want, number one, is a good quality product. They want their interactions, number two, with people to be pleasant. Mm -hmm. They want the process and the procedures to be easy and they respond to incentives. Like make it easy for make people easy. to work with you. Welcome to Power Women of the Trades podcast. This show is all about breaking barriers and changing the game. Our guests will feature some of today's most successful female entrepreneurs and other advocates of our industry as well. Because if there's one thing we know for sure, female-led entrepreneurship drives change on multiple levels. We want to empower women in the trade industry like you so you can maximize your potential, stay balanced, achieve long-term success, and claim ownership over your life. Let's get started. Welcome to Power Women of the Trades podcast. We are in Jacksonville, Florida at the Women of HVACR conference. Uh, this is Cassie. Leslie is not with us today, but I am so excited. Somehow we snagged this guest on our show. She was one of the keynote speakers at this event. Her name is Mary Kelly and... I told her I had to be really honest. I missed her keynote because I was recording. Um, and so now I get a fresh experience. So I'm excited. So Mary, who are you? How are you? Tell us all the things. I'm great. <laughs> My name is Mary Kelly, and I get to do the most amazing thing ever, which is to talk to people and help them with their leadership challenges, their business challenges, their productivity issues. And I am so, so fortunate to be here in Jacksonville with you all today. The women of HVAC are incredible. This is such a wonderful group of tradeswomen who are here to uplift each other, help each other, encourage each other, and really make a difference in this industry. Industry. Yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm excited to hear that perspective from someone that doesn't live and work in our industry on a regular basis. Um, but you know, you you were brought in as a speaker because of your strong leadership, your um, strong people skills, I can tell already, I've talked to you for five minutes, and I already know all the things like I can just tell that you are a, a woman that most should aspire to be because you command a room. And you are very um, just like, again, didn't see your keynote or hear your keynote. Um, but from that perspective, so far, you command a room and so generous. We brought you in here, but we hadn't ate yet. So we were shoveling in food and she said, I'm here to serve you. And I was like, what? So incredible. But so what's a little bit of your story? So I was in the Navy. I joined the Navy out of Dallas, Texas. That's where I grew up. I got to go to the Naval Academy. I graduated in the 80s. I was in the eighth class of graduating women from the Naval Academy. And then I went on to have another 21-year career in the Navy. 17 years of that was in Asia. So I'm used to dealing with multicultural teams and multicultural countries, dealing with all kinds of different people. I feel so fortunate that I got that experience. I started out as an intelligence officer and then transitioned into, into logistics. So I started my career um, looking for Russian submarines and then looking for other nations' submarines mm. and then looking for the Republican Guard. The first Gulf War had broken out. And so then I was looking for the Republican Guard as we were tracking them because it mm -hmm. was war. And then the second Gulf War, pretty much the same thing. And then I transitioned into doing some counterterrorism work, which was very interesting, unlike what a lot of people do. You don't really think about that. You know, when you're in fourth grade, you don't think, oh, counterterrorism, I want to do that. You know, that's not really one of those <laughs> things. On people, yeah, it wasn't on the list. And then I was part of the team that ran Pearl Harbor, a base a lot of people are familiar with. So mm -hmm. that's what we call the big three, big buildings, big people, big budgets. Oh. And you do a lot of logistics, you'd imagine. We had a submarine base, we have a shipyard, we have 26,000 housing areas, housing units. Mm -hmm. We've got childcare centers, we've got medical facilities, we've got all the things that a small city would have. Yeah. And you're kind of running that small city. And then from there, I was a chief of police. And and then from that, I went to run the Navy's largest pay and personnel office. So that was really good. And then from there, I was an HR director for a, about 3,000 people from Oklahoma to the Middle East. And then I concluded my career as a professor back at the Naval Academy. So that's what I did for a career in the Navy. So did you live in Oklahoma? Um, I actually did live in Oklahoma for a while. I'm from Texas, but I have a master's degree from Mo from University of so Oklahoma. So I'm from Tulsa. Yes. Uh, boomer Sooners. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, they did not win, but we're not talking about it. We're not talking about it. We won't talk about it. We won't talk about it. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah, I'm from Tulsa, and so um, that's awesome. Your list of like every time – on the, they don't always show my face on the, the audio or the video uh, you could probably see my face I'm like <laughs> and I'm like here I am I'm like when people ask me that question I always stall because I'm like um well I own a heat and air company and you know but there's like so many things that you just immediately I think like we forget that we do that we don't always give ourselves credit for and I think that's beautiful to just like paint your entire story of all the things that you've done and you know even not having physical trade experience you've had boots on the ground literally boots on the ground we have to be very tactical so think about a ship in the middle of the ocean something breaks you can't call you you got to figure out a way to fix it and sometimes you have a couple spare parts and sometimes it's like apollo 13 the movie Mm -hmm. you have to just figure things out yeah and you got to get everybody together and go okay now what do we got to work with and what's the problem you got to figure it out yeah because you are miles and thousands of miles away from anybody who can help you Mm -hmm. um another ship coming in that might have something that you can use could be days and weeks away you just have to figure it out and so for most of my career i was in those more outlying areas so i spent i did get to spend a good amount of time in asia so i lived in the philippines and japan and korea and i've been in and out of thailand and vietnam and hong kong and singapore and australia and all that and you you know, you're, awesome. you're operating very independently because you kind of have to, mm-hmm. and you just figure things out. You know, yeah. and that's one of the things that I wish I, I wish I could tell my younger self is don't be afraid to say yes to stuff because you'll figure it out. Yep. Like a lot of Americans don't travel overseas internationally because they're like, well, I don't know how I would do it. Well, mm-hmm. buy the ticket. You'll figure it out. You know, and a lot of times people, I think, let obstacles stop them. Yep. They, someone, um, you know, I'm doing several podcasts this week and everyone's asked me, well, do you have an agenda? Do you have, um, what are you going to talk to them about? We were running up the escalator, you and I. um, And I was like, I I am a professional winger. I'm better winging it. Mm. Because if you give me too much, I'm a robot and sound like an idiot. You know what I mean? (laughs) But the more, and you know, I, I relate that experience to even silly Disney World. We were headed to Disney World and everyone said, Said, you have to have your minute by minute by minute planned and I did not do it I had no time I've been too busy I couldn't do it and we had the best time ever because we didn't because you just figure it out you know you have to have the ability to figure it out so um I'm getting this like hopefully this is okay maybe comparison of like are you like the female Jocko um, so I know Jocko, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. He's also much, much cooler than me. The only cool thing about me is um, all my books and programs, I have about 15 books out, mm-hmm. they all have their own wine label. Oh. Okay, because think about that. Then my drinking becomes a marketing experience. Okay. Yeah, I and love it. I can, and then I can share. Uh-huh. Um, so it, that all started because, you know, when you have books and then you're supposed to be selling these books, and I'm, I'm actually quite terrible at selling my own stuff. I can sell your stuff all day long. Yeah. My stuff, that's really hard. And I thought, well, what if I kind of bribed people into buying a book, a package of five books by giving them a bottle of wine to go with it? And it doesn't show up on your business credit card. It shows up as five books. Okay. And then a bottle of wine goes with it with the wine bottle opener and the aerator and the stopper. And smart I, and see that's marketing that's that marketing, marketing right there smart marketing there you go. so i met jocko a few weeks ago and i what i love the the correlation of those two is um in in our own personal business so you know i have the podcast uh, with leslie and then leslie and i both own separate companies so she has a plumbing company in oklahoma city and i uh, my husband and i have a plumbing and hvac company in tulsa and um but we when I'm training our team, a lot of the times I relate a lot of things to the military. Was I in the military? Absolutely not. <laughs> but, but have I? Seen but I've seen movies and I've seen the NCIS and I've seen all the things. Right now, is it all the exact same? No. You know, I've had family members. I have a, a install manager who's I always call him an old marine, respectfully, great guy, but. He is an old Marine and he'll tell you that. And everything that you imagine as an old Marine, he's, you know, he's up at the office at 430. Like he sets the alarm, shuts the alarm off. He's got the coffee made. He's in his routine, but he has processes and systems and those things. And it sounds to me and, and most people. So going back to that, he has all of that ingrained in him from the military, like getting up the expectation, the work ethic, the, all the things that, a lot of our gen- this, the newer generations, mine included, we know how to work hard. We do know how to work, you know, and I think uh, some people can get offended because they're like, no, don't tell us, don't compare us to those. There's just a difference and there's processes that were a little 
pushed a little bit differently, and especially if you come with military experience. So is that kind of what took you into the leadership coaching and things that you're doing now? Not exactly. No, um, no I certainly use the things I learned in the military for yeah. sure. And there are certain things that the military does very well, like the processes and the systems and the procedures. And my big thing was if I'm going to do something more than once, I'm making a checklist. Yeah. Because I cannot be counted on to remember these things. And the person coming after me in the job shouldn't have to reinvent the wheel every time. And that's one of the things I see a lot of folks in business where they don't have necessary. I'm not saying you should over bureaucracy your business. You shouldn't. But if there are things that help you be successful, make a note, make a form, make it easy, then share it with everybody. Mm -hmm. Like today at the keynote, I shared with everybody my 12-month business success and accountability planner. Boom. I use that with every single team, every single group I coach, every single business I, I work with. And I, th I give it to everybody for free. And people are like, why would you do that? I'm like, because we're here to help each other. Yep. We're here to be more effective. We're here to help each other be more productive and more efficient and lift each other up. Why wouldn't we share things? Right. And then there's a level of like, just thinking about that from maybe the marketing side too. When you give something for free that shows that you're capable Mm. right you're giving someone something that you created or you have or you use and then now I want more from you because you have created something that is doable and workable and and taught me so some people often yeah why do I give that for free could I do that could I pay for charge for that sure but when you share things like that it now is like okay now I got to get out and get more you know, from you. And so I think that's good. Still good marketing. It's, it, it's, okay. <laughs> I'll I, give you the marketing. Piece. Oh, thanks. And then I got into this because when I was in my last job at the Naval Academy, I'm teaching at the, Air, at the Naval Academy. Then I went on to teach at the Air Force Academy as well. My boss was always getting called, you know, everybody calls up and go, Hey, can we get the Admiral to come talk to the Boy Scouts and the Marriott and the, the Jamboree down in town? Well, my boss at the time did not like doing that at all. Mm -hmm. was not happy around people, just not a fan. And so the public affairs person will call me and go, hey, Mary, can you, you know, go into D.C. and do this after dinner program? Or can you go? And at the time, I was like, yeah, OK, that, that works for me. So I would literally rebraid my hair. I'm in uniform already. Slap on some lipstick, rebraid my hair, head on out, go do the thing. And they're like, what are you going to talk about? I'm like, well, I know about two things. I know about leadership and dogs. Oh, and some economics. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll somehow merge all that together. And people liked it. So I was, I was surprised. And then some people said, you know, we'd like to have you do this more often. And I thought, really, you can do that? And that's kind of how I got into it was, was there was audience members, there were audience members who said, hey, we would like more of this, exactly yeah. what you said. So um, I mentioned earlier that I didn't get to see the keynote, but my team that's here did. Um, Leslie, who's my co-host, isn't here. She always jokes with me that I travel with an entourage. Um, so these three people that are actually in the room with us right now are part of my team for quality, our plumbing and heat and air company. And they got to go and they were so excited. And they said, if you get her on the podcast, can we be um, uh, the audience? And I said, sure. But one of the things that they were super um like wrote down so excited about was the four things. What do people want? Right. Mm -hmm. That's what That's I took from it. So what do people want? And it doesn't matter if you are in HVAC. It doesn't matter if you run a hotel. It doesn't matter if you run a fast food restaurant. It doesn't matter if you cut hair. What people want, number one, is a good quality product. They want their interactions, number two, with people to be pleasant. Mm -hmm. They want the process and the procedures to be easy. And they respond to incentives, those four things. So, so a good quality product, pleasant interaction, easy process, incentives. And by incentives, I mean, tell us when you're going to show up. Like, mm -hmm. don't give me a 12-hour window. A two-hour window works better. Make the process easy. Can you, pay by, can you pay by credit card? Oh, no, we only take cash in coins on Tuesdays. Right. In $2 bills. Like, make it easy for it people easy. to work with you. Make it easy for people to buy from you. Make it easy for people to contact you. There's nothing more frustrating than you've got a phone number on your website and it doesn't work or it's disconnected or it goes to voicemail and you don't get a call or back in three days. Or you can't text to it. And you can't text to it. Yeah, You're like, so that's Seriously? a big deal. Yeah, stop doing, stop yeah. doing that. Stop yeah. giving us numbers that you can't text to. Mm -hmm. Because in the service industry, I need you when I am the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And yes, you've got all the great marketing, all the great product differentiation. Maybe your prices are better. Maybe your service is better. But when my water he heater breaks and I got water in my house, I'm going to go with the person who's most responsive. Yep. You know, that's that product differentiation. Mm -hmm. So make it easy for me to be the person 
I'm going to buy from. I always say um, to our teller team that nobody calls us for a beer. No one's calling and like, hey, you want to come hang out? I want to like meet me at the bar. We'll have a drink first or whatever. No one's calling for that. They're calling because something's broke. They're worried about how it's, they're going to fix it. Um, can they afford to fix it? And how fast can you be here to fix it? Right. So that's it. That's the same thing. And so it's just like, make it easy. I always joke too when people are like, can they cash up? I'm like, I take all the money. You know, but however they want, we'll figure it out and get oh, it into the book. I've been paid in random gift cards. Yeah. I don't care. Like, yeah. I did work for a strip mall, and they were like, how do we pay you? I'm like, I, I was being funny. I was like, random gift cards work. And that's kind of how I got paid. Like, everybody kind of mm-hmm. chipped in gift cards. And I got to tell you, that was the funniest Christmas gift thing ever. Like, all my family got these random gift cards. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, yeah. But it, it, what you have to make it easy for the people. Mm-hmm. I love that. So I want to be respectful of your time because you did just jump in here with us, and we're so thankful that you did that. And I can't wait for our audience to hear this podcast. But one thing that you said that you had knowledge of is economics. Mm -hmm. And um, especially that seems like something maybe you might have some insight on for 2024, because we feel it feels weird right now. People are worried Um, for a little bit in our industry. Some of the, you know, maybe influencers on our in social media were kind of painting the world's ending. Um, The sky's falling. What are you going to do if no one calls? And what do you think about that? And what would you, what advice would you give to people who are rolling into 2024? I'm going to be a little harsh. There's a lot of people who have used the last three years as an excuse to not get the business. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who are using, oh, there's supply chain problems. Oh, there's this problem. There's that problem. You know, your job is to fix all that. Mm-hmm. Figure, figure it out. Merce came out last week and said their supply chain stuff is not going to get fixed till 2026. If you're one of those people who is like, oh, well, we're just going to wait till everything fixes itself. We're just going to sit here very passively and throw mm-hmm. up our hands and hope that everything gets better. You know what? You deserve to not have a great successful business because there's people out there crushing it yep. in this industry who are crushing it mm-hmm. and they are not letting the excuses hold them back. Mm -hmm. They're out there figuring it out. And so if you really want it, you can figure it out. So let me give you the, the, what's going on economically. Three things. First, our GDP is still the highest in the world at $26 trillion. Highest in the world, except our national debt at $33.7 trillion is an absolute problem, and it's a legacy. We are leaving our kids, and it's not right. We are overspending. Our government expenditures right now are crowding out private industry and private consumption, and that is going to be that is the problem that we've got right now. The, what the Federal Reserve is doing right now with interest rates means business loans until next fall are going to be very expensive. Mm -hmm. Buying a house between now and next fall, very expensive simply because of the higher interest rates. You know who doesn't have to care about that? People paying cash. Mm -hmm. So three years ago, I told folks, look, we're heading into some rough time. This is before COVID was on the horizon, Mm -hmm. that we knew economic factors. There were going to be external shocks. So I'm like, stock up on cash. You're going to need cash in the next three to five years. Stock up on cash. And a lot of people did. And now they're the ones who are able to pay cash for the houses, pay cash for the stuff they need, pay cash for their inventory. Mm -hmm. So good financial management means understanding what's going on in the economic marketplace so that you're making the right decisions so you can have faster results. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan. I call it stronger strategy uh, for better decisions and faster results because that's what we need. And if you say to your clients, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, uh, we can get that, oh, your heater, yeah, I know it's December, but we can't get you a heater for like seven months. Okay, your business is gone forever. Yeah. Yeah, you're gone forever. So our job is to overcome all those obstacles. Mm -hmm. Is it a little bit harder? In some cases, yes. Does it mean you have to work with your competition? Yes, it does. Work cooperatively with your competition. Nobody knows your business better than than the person on the other side of it. So work with each other. I'm a big fan of that. And a lot of people think it's counterintuitive, like you and Leslie. Mm -hmm. Like she does plumbing, you do plumbing. Some people say, well, you're competing with, you know, your... Yeah, but there's plenty of pie to go around. Yeah. That's what a lot of people, I think, miss. Yeah. So on the economic side, um, where we are strong right now is our wages and salaries have increased by 3 to 5%. The median income in the United States right now is about $74,000. That's for a household, not an individual. So wages have gone up. The bad news is with inflation, even though the numbers look good at 3.7%, it's not measuring anything past 12 months ago. Mm -hmm. So everything that happened from 2020 up until 2023 before before the months this year means that we're largely ignoring that when we look Mm -hmm. at the inflation numbers. 
And that's not an accurate portrayal. 3.7% people go, oh, it should be fine because my wages increased 5%. That's not true. Because the average food at home increased by 24%. The average cars increased by 17%. And that's over three years. So people are hurting. And that's the issue. So we have to come up with more creative solutions. You know, more people are saying, hey, can you repair my my systems? Can you help me just limp along for another season? And that's where you being the BLT sandwich, you are the person I believe and I like and I trust. I'm like... I need some help because I don't have the cash to replace it. What can you do for me? Yeah. And that's where you're really working, again, to serve your clients, which yeah. is what you want to be doing. Yeah. So um, for, and I can obviously just speak for my company. Our number one core value is serve people. And we've always said that that means to serve our customers, serve our employees, serve our community. But sometimes, you know, it's we got to meet them where they're at. You know, never have I been in a spot where we take so many payment plans. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, That's used to be something we said no to. And we know that we're going to go on a risk that maybe we don't get paid, you know. Um, And and there is a threshold. You know, I can't do that for huge, huge purchases. But if I can get you heat and uh, you pay me out $600 over a couple months, then then I served you and I I helped you, you know. Um, But the world is I love that you said, you know, if you don't do whatever it takes, basically, is what I took from that. You don't deserve to be in business, right? Like you got to work hard, you got to quit. I get so frustrated in our industry when some of these, and I say influencers, understanding that I'm probably one of those influencers also, but I just try to stay positive with the outlook of what's to come. Because we've seen so many say, um, your, your credit or interest rates are too high, you know, basically, and it's almost been like this to help you sell the business. Let, let me, let me buy your business. Cause you're not going to make it as this little guy. And it's like, that's not true. You know, just have an open mind, get in there, be willing to do the work. Don't make any excuses, you know, um, supply chain issues. We had a manufacturer that just could not get it together and we had to fire them and go to a new one that sucked. We were with the previous one for several years. They told us, you're going to have to just deal with it. We couldn't, right? So we had to do whatever it takes to make sure we can continue on. And it's still, you can run a successful business in 2023 and in 2024 still. A lot of it's accountability. You know, a lot of people... They, they will use anything for an excuse to not do fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. But if you're holding yourself accountable and you're really being honest, it's like, okay, did I really give 110% today? Did I really do everything I could have? You know, do I need to be thinking of a creative solution? And you have to live with yourself. Mm-hmm. And that to me is a self-respect issue. If you're not giving 110% every day, I guess you actually can't do that mathematically, but you get the <laughs> idea that sometimes people just, I don't understand when people say, I don't, I just don't want to work that hard. I'm like, well, at least if you're not going to work that long, at least work hard during the time you're at work. Right. You know, I'm not asking everybody to work a 90 hour week. Mm-hmm. You, let's say you're working a 40 hour week. Well then actually work the 40 hour week. Right. Give those hours, like give it, but with your, but with the right spirit, be joyful yeah. in the fact that you've got a great job. Mm-hmm. Be joyful in the fact that we get to serve other people. Be yep. joyful in the fact that we get to give when we're, when we're successful, we, that makes us better for our families, for our communities, for everybody around us. We get to pay our employees better. Why wouldn't we want to try hard? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't we want to do our best every single day? And I found a lot of people through COVID, they kind of gave up on themselves. And that to me is the most hurtful thing is they gave up on themselves. They make excuses. And now nothing looks good to them because they've kind of worked themselves into what I call the pit of despair. You know, that downward spiral starts and they lose their confidence because they're not doing. Confidence comes by doing. It Mm -hmm. doesn't come by me going, you go, girl. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 No, it comes because you got out there and you did it. Yeah. Confidence comes when you're doing it and you're like, oh, I didn't think I could do that. Now I can do that. Okay, I guess I can do that. Yeah. And people lost confidence. Some people call it they lost their mojo. I don't know. I think they lost motivation. They lost, yeah. And, you know, something we try to remind our technicians and our office staff, like, you are not just a technician. You are going into a house and potentially saving someone's life. Like, Mm -hmm. if you are paying attention and doing your checks the way you should, um, we had one just this last weekend that the fire department was called out. The carbon monoxide was blazing through there. And there was a small, there was a gas leak through the heat exchange or it was through the heat exchanger, yada, yada, yada. Right. We save, help be a part of saving that family's life. Right. You're yes. not just an HVAC technician. We know that if the America shut off the water to 
um, America, within three weeks, 80% of Americans would be dead. And uh, mo- they say 100% of children. We have to have water. You are not just a plumber. You are doing big things and big work. And you're not just the girl that answers the phone. You're not just the girl that sells those things. But you have to like speak that back into yourself. Because like you said, through COVID, it was like, how many times have, and I've said it myself, like, have we told a story and said, well, then COVID happened? Right. Because, <laughs> you're like, uh. But the reality is life is tough, you know, and there's always going to be some external shock that you can't control. And the big question is, are you equipped to deal with it? Are you doing your best every single day to make you a better person, a better leader, a better leader for your team and doing the same thing for your people? Yeah. I don't expect everybody to know how to respond to every single situation in business, but I do expect them to be working on their skills every single day so that when something happens, they're better prepared for it. Right. You know, in the military, we don't prepare for every single possible contingency, but you prepare for a few, mm-hmm. hoping that those skills will translate into what you need at that time. Yeah. And, you know, you think about COVID, okay, okay, great. Who else in the history of all mankind has ever been better equipped to deal with COVID? Us. Right. With the technology, with the tools, with all the facilities, with everything we know since the dawn of time. Mm-hmm. If we can't deal with COVID, who can? Right. You know, so we're so lucky. We're so lucky we to lucky. be living in these challenging yeah. times. We are. Mm-hmm. And think about it, too. Like, it's uh, all of our ancestors ahead of us, they all had their own COVID. They all had their own something. They did. Right? And they overcame. And you're here because they overcame. So we just keep trucking on with them, right? Like, as if they did. So um, is there anything, you know, just like final words or advice that you would give to the women specifically in our industry that are trying to find their place um, or looking for that extra motivation to get out there and do it? Uh, I love acronyms. I told the team this morning, I love acronyms. And as we kind of wrap up, the acronym I like is PIVOT. I know that's very corny and we use it a lot during COVID. But it's very quickly, it is every single day, remind yourself of your purpose, your why, why you here, why you here and who do you serve. The I in PIVOT is be prepared to influence and inspire people every single day. Even if you're having a bad day, especially if you're having a bad day, you still got to help other people out. The V in pivot is the volatility and the vulnerability. Assess people where they are and step in to help where you can. The O is opportunities. There's always opportunities. If you choose not to see them, that's probably a bad business decision. Mm -hmm. And then the T is tools, technology, and training. Make sure your people have what they need. Every single time they show up on a job site, they should have the right tools, the right training, and the right technology to do that job great. Pivot. Pivot. I love it pivot she said mic drop (laughs) well mary we're so thankful to have you on the podcast and it sounds like you had an amazing um keynote that i now wish i had been to um and i was even prepared to meet you i was telling you before from my um friend susan fru who is also a speaker and she was so excited for us to all hear you so again thank you so much for being on our show and if anyone wanted to reach out or can potentially connect with you something that we could maybe put in our show notes how could they do that the website is productiveleaders.com forward slash podcast and then they get all kinds of free stuff productiveleaders.com forward slash podcast awesome boom awesome well thank you so much thank you have a great day this has been power women of the trades like what you hear so far leave us a review and apple and make sure to listen to our other episodes wherever you enjoy listening to your podcasts thanks for listening and we'll catch you on the next one